Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be doing a uh, showcase for a year that I really like. And that's 1971. There's a lot of uh, interesting stuff produced in 71 and uh, it's uh, capped off by those difficult to get uh, condition sensitive black border 1971 tops cards as you can see in front of you. So I'm going to go ahead and start off here uh, with probably my favorite card from that lot, this 1971 Topps Thurman Munson Rookie. Very tough to get this in high grades. This excellent sixth grade is a, you can get this at a very reasonable rate. Uh, I like this one because the centering on it is pretty good. This card is known to be off centered left to right, uh, looking at it as it stands. Uh, and the centering on this is not bad. The right bottom corner's got a ding that's holding this back from being a seven. So uh, I was really excited to get this even though it is a six, but that image is just fantastic with that rookie cup and his uh, his autograph on that or his fake autograph on that and uh the, i don't know if that rick is that rick monday slide and i don't know who it is but just a great action shot uh very imaginative and you've got some other cool cards as well the dave concepcion burt bly levin willie mccovey um, that's uh bly levin's rookie i just i showed that in another video then you've got the leader sets uh here this has got Couple Bob Gibson cards, but it's got uh, I got to collect all these guys: Fergie Jenkins, Gaylord Perry, Tom Seaver. So loaded with Hall of Famers. And then you're going on. You're looking at uh, like Steve Carlton, uh, young Carlton, starting to come into his own. And then uh, Pete Rose, Gaylord Perry. You'll see like most of these are seven sixes. There's a half grade six point five. That's kind of why I try to go. I mean, I'd love to get everything in a seven, but sometimes you can't. Sometimes you get a little better in a seven. So. I just take them as I can get them. Uh, Bobby Valentine, rookie. There's a Rod Carew in a 7.5. That Hoyt Wilhelm, uh, late in his career, second to last card. He's still looking pretty fit for a guy that's well into his 40s. And uh, even then, uh, I didn't pay a whole lot for this Johnny Bench. It's just a two. It's kind of beat up. But still, hey, yeah, it's a cool card to have in the collection. Like that Joe Morgan from the Astros there, or the action shot. Lots of good action shot photography in this. After 1970, didn't have, I mean, that wasn't that imaginative on the imagery. So 71 was pretty, uh, they did some pretty creative stuff. Uh, George Foster, Scal, showed that in another video just recently. And then uh, Fergie Jenkins and Juan Marischold. Marischold was starting to show his age a little bit. They did a World Series uh, highlight, this time different than the 70. They used color, so it's a little better. There's Frank Robinson uh, showing some muscle. And then I got a nice run of a, a couple Steve Garvey rookies here. Uh, five, six, two sevens, and eight. Don't ask me why I have so many of those. Can't really tell you. Just like the card. Don Sutton, uh, 1971. And a seven. Uh, a couple commons. I got a Bob Veal, although he was a pretty good pitcher in the mid 60s. And then uh, really, they got, like I said, a lot of the Hall of Famers towards the tail end of their careers, such as this Hank Aaron. And then some pretty good players uh, coming along. 71's got a good rookie class, that Greg Wazinski. Then the Bob Gibson card, like that Bob Gibson card. And then uh, my second favorite card of the set here, this uh, 71 Tops, Nolan Ryan there. Like that Royal Crown Cola, RC Cola sign in the background, it shows him pitching. Still hadn't established himself as a star yet. Uh, we're looking at some of the higher numbers here with a 513. It's a little more difficult to get. And then a really ugly photo of Ernie Banks, but this is significant in that it's his last card as an active player there at the first base. And one of the nicer grades again, a near mint to Nate Mike Ryan. And then I got his autograph on this one as well from my Mike Ryan collection. Couple more Hall of Fame pitchers. This is Jim Bunning's last card. Couple of great gems. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, you're entrenched in the high numbers now here with the Frank Robinson. Tough card. Another uh, tough rookie from the high numbers, the John Matlack. And then uh, I just showed this in the last video. I have a couple of these uh, Dusty Baker, Don Baylor rookie cards. I guess you could say I got one for Don Baylor, one for Dusty Baker. So, and then uh, Opeachy does a does a card as well. Looks very similar. I think the edges on there show a little bit more white. I don't know if they're more of a rough cut. But one thing I do like about these is if you flip them on the back, the imagery is different. They have a little bit more 
I like that picture on the back as opposed to the tops is a, is a greenish, here I'll show you, is a greenish tint, you know, and then kind of dull. Still cool. That was kind of a rev, uh, revolutionary concept to put the picture on the back. First time Tops ever does that, actually. But uh, still the Opeachy variation is pretty cool. And then there's a lot of interesting stuff now that comes out, these Tops tattoos. I'll show you an uncut sheet here in a moment. These aren't tough to get, but there are some tough ones. The Kellogg's cards from 71. They didn't mass produce these like they did in other years. You couldn't get a mail away a set, so you had to actually literally pull these from boxes of cereal. So they're tough to get and at a premium. So they're going to be more expensive than any of the other years of those early uh, Tops Kellogg's 3D cards. Then Bazooka did a card set again. I'll show you an uncut box of that. It's really cool. Uh, really nice Bob Gibson. And then Dell Team Stamps came out. So they did these uh, on sheets of nine. A uh, very inef uh, very inexpensive way to start collecting some Hall of Fame players out there. And, I mean, they've got them all. And they have the caps on, too, which is cool. They had the licensing to do that. So the Dell Team Stamps, uh, like I said, Hall of Famers galore. That Nolan Ryan, man, if you wanted a 71 Nolan Ryan, that's not that expensive. It's possible to get that stuff. And the really cool imagery on this is not bad. I mean, there's nothing imaginative on the backs, and they're just stamps. But if you're looking to start a, a vintage collection and you don't have a lot of money, these uh, these Dell Team Stamps are a great option to, to delve into something that's uh, from the period uh, where things have, have just gone up so much in price lately. And, kind of can price some people out of the market. But those are pretty cool little pieces. And I want to come down here to some oversized stuff. This is a very popular set from 71, the greatest moment set. A lot of debate on, on whether or not these were mass produced or sent out in the general public or they're just a test issue. But they are hard to come by and pretty expensive. Got a couple Bob Gibson uh, pieces here. And a six. And that one's autographed. The autograph looks like garbage. Uh, but Bob, both those in 2011 didn't pay a whole lot for them. Uh, when I showed in the 1970 set as well, these uh, top super cards. Got the McCovey and the Gibson. San Francisco Giants put out a uh, team postcard here in 1971. Willie McCovey kind of carried it for a couple years, so that's why they have it from 71 to 82. And then over here, another interesting piece from Mattel, the toy company. They had these little discs that would play uh, little stories. Uh, some of you from the 80s remember that, that baseball talk. This is the, the first attempt at that. So the prototype, I guess, that maybe uh, baseball talk tried to rip off later on with their little discs on the back of cards. But these were actual little records. These are the double-sided variation. So they've got an image on both sides. Pretty cool. Pretty cool pieces that I picked up. Some other things that I really like is the 71 Milk Duds set. So uh, Holloway came out with these on their boxes of Milk Duds. And these are just... You know, I don't know if this have the price on these. I don't know if these are like 10 cent boxes or, or what the price on these were, but these were little milk dead boxes with player cards on the back. Uh, to get these, uh, you can get them. I mean, some people cut them out. It's easier to get higher grades when they've been cut out of the box. Boxes grade very uh, poorly. But I think they have better eye appeal looking at them as a complete box. And I'm like looking at these uh, Frank Robinson, Bob Gibsons, even though they're VGX4. I mean, these things look pristine. I mean, they look like they just came off the factory floor. So, uh, yeah, just tough. Tough to get graded in high quantity or high grades on these, but they're super cool. Another box from that year, I showed you uh, a bazooka. So here's what a whole box looks like. This is the Juan Marichal, Frank Howard, Bill Melton on this one. I'll flip this over too. Pretty cool. I mean... <laughs> That's really cool, man. It's like, you know, it brings you back to an era. Like, I wasn't even born yet in 71, but I would have loved to have been pulling this stuff off the shelf. You know, no, what more could you want than a box of bubble gum and then having all those cool cards on the on it here. And let me come down here. Tops also inserted in packs. So a lot of interesting stuff this year. Some coins. So some coinages and some sevens. Bob Gibson, Frank Robinson, Joe Morgan, Jim Palmer, Gabriel Perry, guys I collect. And as I wrap this up and try to get it under 10 minutes here, I'm going to show you something else. It shows those baseball tattoos. So Tops came out with this tattoo set. Very tough. Some are not that tough. The ones I showed weren't tough, but this one is very tough. Uh, for my Bob Gibson collection, I bought this raw. paid quite a bit for it. But it's got the Rod Carew and Bob Gibson. They're reverse negative because they're expecting for you to put it on your skin or something. And they come off. So some of them are more rare than others. Uh, this one is actually number 15 of 16 in the series. I don't know if the last couple ones are more difficult, but that is. 
Uh, if anyone ever sees one graded, uh, Bob Gibson, let me know because I'm looking for my collection. I don't want to tear this one up, but uh, looking to get one graded. But that is everything I got from 1971. Once again, everyone, I appreciate your posting comments. I'll talk to you again soon.